Hello, I'm Brendan Wishway. I teach physics here at Obanzi and have been teaching here since 2011. And I'm David C. I've been teaching here, teaching physics since the 2000 school year. And though we have, uh, that means we have over three decades of experience teaching physics between us. Um, but even though we've been doing, you know, this physics education thing for all this time, we still are making changes to our curriculum and how we teach to better serve our students. And we're here to inform you both how the courses run and our best methods for learning physics. Um, we think that the grade at the end of the class should be reflective over what the student has actually learned and what they've mastered. Have you ever been in this situation or heard of this situation before where um, you are learning and as you're going along the course, you're doing everything you possibly can to figure out that stuff. You feel like you're doing a pretty good job. And then all of a sudden you take a quiz and you don't do as well on that quiz as you anticipated. Maybe you get a C, and, but you, were really th you really thought you were at the A status. Now, being the good student you are, you did everything that you could to then figure out that stuff, and you did figure out that stuff. Come the test, you did very well on the test, you got an A on that test, but because that C quiz was still there, the maybe overall standing in the course is a B, and not what you feel is really reflective over what you know. Or uh, experience I had, I was taking a group of students to, uh, to a meet, and I overheard one of the students talking about the fact that he was so excited, his grade had come out, his semester grade for math, and he was so excited that he had gotten a 90.1%. And he was excited that he had gotten the grade he wanted with putting the bare minimum amount of effort into the course. And it was just shocking to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're excited because you learned the least amount possible to get the grade. So uh, for these reasons, and like many more, um, the effect it has on, on relationships between students and between students and parents and between students and teachers, uh, the fact that um, it has besides the relationships, there's negative effects on motivation. Uh, does the grade really motivate them to learn the material better, to, to enjoy the material, to get interest in the material, or does it kill that interest in the material, not having to worry about the grade? Or um, the fact that it, of course, promotes cheating when you start putting grades on things. Uh, for these reasons and many more, uh, research over decades uh, by educational research has shown that there are better ways of assessing students. So in this course, we are going to be doing uh, homework and having homework that kids go and do and come back and we work it through in class. We'll have quizzes and tests, but this homework, these homework quizzes and tests that we're going to be doing, um, we're not going to have formal grades as you might in many other courses. Instead, for the homework, the students will go and try the homework. They will come together in class. We will have class discussions on this stuff. We will go through every homework problem together in class to see the full worked out solution. We will then go take quizzes as we normally would, except instead of them maybe handing it in and getting a quiz grade back at some uh, random point, we'll go over it uh, directly with the students right away so they can get immediate feedback and not just feedback on, well, how did they do A, B, or C, but instead very specific poignant feedback on, well, what did they do that maybe wasn't so great? Why wasn't that so great? And what are different ways to be able to do that that are maybe superior to that? We'll do that for quizzes and we'll do it for tests as well. While they're doing it, while we're going through these quizzes and tests, um, they are encouraged and actually required to be taking notes for themselves on things that they have yet to learn that they still need to do some more work on. Um, they're taking notes on this on what we call an assessment marking sheet. It is a sheet that has the outline of each unit of all the main topics in each unit where the students can take detailed notes on the things that they still are struggling with and still need to work more at um, and can take those notes under those specific topics that they're still struggling with. And so the students are getting lots of good useful feedback, not just this is right or this is wrong, but why? And it also gives them a chance to ask questions right away while it's still fresh in their minds. Um, and so as much as uh, we're doing this because the, the quizzes and the tests then are actually useful for the students and they start to see them as something that's meant to help them instead of something being done to them, right? And so um, it's really interesting to see the change in the dynamic in the classroom when you start doing it this way. Um, so the students are getting all this useful feedback and we're getting to see their papers and getting those from them and seeing, like, we're getting good useful feedback in our teaching and seeing what's working, what's not, do I need to address this topic a little bit more? Um, but all this stuff, we're not putting in the grade book. We're not even assigning a grade to any of these things. There's just giving them good, useful, actionable feedback. Um, and so we are, however, required to have a semester grade for the course. And so how is that determined? 
So we're going to have three um, large exams. We call them cumulative exams. Uh, each one is over the material that was covered already in class on the quizzes and unit tests in class. And so it's in some ways they kind of act like a retake, but it's the one that actually goes in the gradebook. Um, and so by the time they get to these cumulative exams, they will have already had all the homeworks and gotten lots of feedback and gotten the different assessments in class to kind of check where they're at and answer, see, catch any little mistakes they're making. So the cumulative exams should be fantastic. Um, and so we'll have them, like the first one will be like about a third of the way through the semester, we'll have the first cumulative exam over all the material that was on quizzes and tests up to that point. About two thirds of the way through the course, we'll have the second cumulative exam over everything from the start of the semester all the way through to about two thirds in the course that they've already had stuff they've already had on quizzes and tests. And then the third cumulative exam is the one that's usually called the final exam, which of course is over all the material for all the quizzes and tests through the course. Um, so each of those uh, will be a certain amount of uh, fraction of the grade. And then the last chunk of the grade uh, is what I like to call learning and growth points. The idea is that if they're doing all of the things they should be doing in the course, if they're giving the homework sets a good first attempt, uh, coming to school, have a uh, class with homework done, uh, having the good discussions in their groups and whiteboard presentations to the class and answering questions and asking questions for the homework and go back and retrying homework problems they didn't get right the first time. If they're doing all these things in good notes on their assessment, marking sheets, mm -hmm. so they've got record of what work, what questions they had. If they're doing all this all the way through, they can't help but be learning the physics and it makes sense for some points to go in the gradebook to show that progress. Um, and so they'll be getting, that'll be rounding out the rest of the points for the semester. Mm -hmm. And so from your end, it'll be a little bit different than some courses because there won't be many grades that you see in the grade book, but you'll actually have better feedback because the students will have better feedback. And those assessment marking sheets that they're taking notes on of things that they still are in the learning process for, whether it's the, from the quizzes or the tests, um, they're required to take that home and have an actual conversation with you about how things are going. And hopefully that conversation is much more than good but instead actually is very detailed and poignant because you can look at the assessment marking sheet, you can see all the main topics of the unit and their notes on, oh, I, I was still learning this bit or this bit. And so, you know, maybe uh, they could actually make an actionable plan to, uh, to help themselves with that. And maybe you could be part of that process to help them along there as well. And so um, if you have uh, any other questions about this material. We'd love to have more uh, information we'll share in another video about the research and um, reasoning that goes behind this uh, grading policy. But if you have any questions, please, please, please uh, send us emails, contact us, let us know, and we can uh, get back to you on that. Thank you.